Hello, my name is Andy Tattersall. I'm an information professional and uh, an information specialist at the University of Sheffield in the School of Health and Related Research. This is a presentation about altmetrics. It's a whistle-stop tour of altmetrics and various associated tools. And it has uh, been recorded to uh, coincide with the launch of a book I've edited on the topic of altmetrics for Facet Publishing. Uh, which also features chapters by Andrew Booth, Claire Beecroft, William Gunn, Ewan Aidy and Ben Showers. Um, the book has 12 chapters and takes uh, readers through the journey of how altmetrics came about, how they work, the many tools involved, how librarians and information professionals can actually employ these tools and encourage others to use them. Uh, open peer review is also covered in the book as well as mobile apps. So the book will be out in June 2016. And it's also kind of backed off by a blog post that I wrote. Uh, there's two posts I've written for the Silip blog. One that I wrote uh, in 2015 about altmetrics, what they are and why they should matter to the library and information community. So perhaps it's worth going having a read at that uh, short um, article. You'll be able to find it if you just kind of search on the web or there's the URL down in the bottom left hand corner. So we know that research and the ref is changing how we um, disseminate research is particularly changing via such as social media and a social web and how we try and capture um, this scholarly communication as part of um, potential research assessment and, and how we find out about the impact of research can be aided by such as altmetrics and I'll explain what they are. So in terms of how it kind of applies for um, librarians and information professionals uh, the research process is very much kind of based around the idea that researchers have an idea for research. They filter and review the research that currently exists. They then publish, disseminate their research, and then they measure the uh, research and discuss it afterwards. We know this kind of model has been around for years. It is slightly um, kind of staid and a little bit kind of stale and not particularly reactive to such as what goes on the web in terms of conversations and discussions. Uh, but we also know that librarians have a big part to play in this. Um, for a start, they, uh, the library is the, the one that hosts the catalogues and the actual published research that the, the researchers will refer to. They then carry out such as things like systematic reviews and literature reviews and uh, searches to support uh, researchers in various kind of fields of research. And they're also experts at uh, publishing and communication, open access, because you usually find that the open access department of any kind of university will be based within a library or associated groups. Uh, and library information professionals have been one of the kind of the earliest groups to kind of adopt social media and such as blogging. And uh, the whole thing which kind of underpins altmetrics, the social web, um, has been very much kind of something that librarians and information professionals have taken to quite easily. They're also uh, experts in measurements and bibliometrics. And usually you find that librarians and information professionals are working in neutral roles. They just want to kind of help everybody. They want to kind of give everyone a, a helping hand in, in how they kind of access data, but also how they may want to communicate it. And as we find out later on, with such as altmetrics, how they may want to find out how it's been communicated. So the development of altmetrics, really the altmetrics, um, when it first appeared in 2010, um, after a kind of a hack day, uh, there was a tweet by Jason Priam from Impact Story referring to the term altmetrics. And since then, it's kind of become a little bit of a Chinese whispers that people have their own very much an idea of what altmetrics are in the same way that they may have their own idea of what impact is and how that can be measured. Um, and for some people, they saw it as a bit of a threat that altmetrics would in fact replace traditional metrics. But actually, altmetrics are there to complement traditional metrics. They're there to give an extra layer on top of what we already know and what we can already see. So it's to help people understand how their research is being received and used and by who. It's not intended as an indicator of quality. Some people may see it as an indicator of quality. The higher the altmetric score, the better the research is. But then um, the same can be applied to citations, that the higher the citations a paper has does not necessarily mean it is a better paper than one that has less citations. But it can help provide further evidence of what is engagement and societal impact. And something quite important quite often which researchers 
don't get enough credit for is that it can find them credit for the research outputs that are other than articles. So Altmetrics aims to measure things other than journals. So Altmetrics are based on article level metrics as opposed to the traditional model, which is quite often journal level metrics, uh, publication metrics. Whereas Altmetrics can look at things like data sets, it can look at posters, it can look at presentations, and it can give us data on how these are being shared and communicated and how, to some extent, how popular they are. Although this is not about being the most popular or the most kind of uh, communicative on and in terms of research it is about actually discovering where your research is being communicated so they say they're complementary to citation metrics and the score is an indicator and the underlying qualitative data tells you who's saying what about your research so it's about tracking attention to scholarly outputs across peer reviews news wikipedia citations policy documents research blogs bookmarks on reference managers like Mendeley and mentions on Twitter. It's a lot of things that we haven't actually measured before, but we've known for the last few years that these kind of communications have been taking place and it is quite useful to find out where and by who. So Altmetrics, in terms of altmetric.com, uh, which is one of the Altmetric companies based in, in the UK, uh, gives real-time immediate feedback uh, on attention to scholarly content. It helps track attention to broad range of research outputs. And this can be articles, as I say, posters, data sets, working papers. It could even be computer coding. It also shows non-academic engagement and also practitioners, general public, interested parties, communicators. This could be charities. This could be uh, private researchers. It could be uh, uh, public and private companies. Also, funders and other impact assessors want to see the broader picture of engagement. So having something like this, having a tool like altmetric.com, can show where this is going on. Interpreting the altmetric data, well, really, it's about things like um, retweets and shares. It's the attention that it gets. But then it's also the engagement, it's the discussion, it's the reviews. And then it's the impact, such as what is shaping policy. What is it influencing? So if suddenly a piece of research that you wrote in, 20, uh, in, in 2010 suddenly appears on a policy document in 2016, has that helped shape that policy? How has it been used? And the thing is that in the past you would not have probably known it had been used. It would have been pulled out in a literature search featured in the policy document and you probably wouldn't have found out unless you were specifically searching around in these particular areas or came across this document. So it brings the attention out into the open but just remember that the numbers don't necessarily tell you the full picture so a great altmetric score and we can see the score on the altmetric donut here on the right doesn't necessarily tell you everything it doesn't tell you um, necessarily whether it is a good piece of research it tells you that one that is being communicated and this is where detractors may come in and start to criticize altmetrics but the problem by ignoring such as altmetrics or alternative indicators is that we communicate our research but don't know where it's going and that in itself is just seems a very much a missed opportunity it's like putting your research into a bottle and casting it out to sea and the chances are it will wash up on the shore and the chances are somebody may read your note and your research paper that you stuffed into that bottle but um, you may never find out who that was and you may never know whether it had an impact on what they did so altmetrics are part of a broader conversation. They're there to kind of aid uh, traditional bibli bibliometrics, such as funding awards, um, clinical guidelines, awards and professional recognition, government, government debates, changes curriculum, patents, public speaking events. It's just something else that's going on in the bigger picture. And to some extent, you know, the horse kind of bolted a while ago in terms of trying to capture this data, uh, but now things are happening in place to make sure that we can kind of make the most of what's going out in terms of new research and these are the sort of things that we should have been doing probably 10 15 years ago we didn't really have a plan when we started with the web and putting all our research onto there and we we kind of never thought about the fact that we may want to kind of look at article level metrics as opposed to journal levels so how do they populate the database so first of all for the altmetric tool altmetric.com you need an output which could be a journal article data set etc then this needs an identifier this has to be attached to the output so this could be a DOI which is a digital object identifier 
or a PubMed ID, etc. So whatever it is, as long as there is an identifier, it can then be tracked. And then Altmetrics will track the source of these mentions depending on uh, that it, whether it's got a DOI, PMID, etc. So how does it aggregate online attention? Well, it follows a list of sources, and it can follow blogs, news policy, uh, policy documents, social media, etc. It then searches for the links to the papers. So it automatically will look for the link and it will text mine to try and find the actual kind of papers that are being mentioned. And then it collates all this attention uh, across the different kind of platforms and puts it in a way that you can easily digest it. And displays it into the altmetric um, display pages. So you can then start to see uh, all this attention in one place. So altmetrics do track more than DOIs. It can track ISBNs, uh, archive IDs, which is an open access database, uh, SSR and, and IDs, um, lots and lots of things. It even now tracks cl clinical trials um, from the uh, .gov records um, in the US. They track even more than this. They track lots and lots of uh, news outlets, lots of academic social media uh, blogs, also post-publication review sites such as Publons and Pubpeer, searches for policy documents, then other sources such as Wikipedia, which is increasingly being uh, given more kind of credence and, and kudos within the academic uh, sphere. Uh, also YouTube, which gets an awful lot of, of, of attention. Reddit, F1000, which is Faculty of 1000, Pinterest, and uh, even citations. It also checks reference management uh, tools such as Mendeley and Citelite, looking at the actual read accounts. And there has been research that's been carried out which which shows that um, the, that, the, that if a paper has been uh, saved in a, an online reference management tool, such as Mendeley and Citelite, that we can kind of check the number of readers, then the more likely it is that it's going to be cited. Um, so that is, in, you know, that is a good indicator of potential kind of uh, citation impact. And I say it will also track varying um, policy documents, as you can see here, uh, a lot of policy documents that are all being tracked for mentions of research depending on uh, the, whether they've got a DOI or a PMID etc. And it's all about trying not to miss a mention uh, and it will always link to a page that includes your researcher's unique ID so um, if you've got a DOI and PubMed on the article then this is how you make sure that your research gets tracked so if you have a research output uh, make sure it has its DOI or PubMed ID and then it will be easily tracked. It then needs to be in the main body of the post, so Altmetric can't pick up any links that are included in headers or other sections of, sections of a page, e.g. in a blog post. So it has to be in the main body of the post. Um, if you are unsure whether a source is being tracked, then there is an email address here, support at altmetric.com, where you can actually find out whether things are being tracked. So in terms of Altmetrics, why they came about, um, with traditional metrics, with citations, we found that they were very slow to accrue. So we can see a paper here about a uh, dinosaur, and um, we can see that it's got no citations on Web of Science, Crossref, or Scopus, but we can see that it's been picked up by 41 news outlets, it's been tweeted by 44 people, it's been blogged by 6 people, and there are 2 videos. So that is some very, very good and quick feedback uh, that we can then drill into. We can start to see where the news sites that have been covering it, Science Now, National Geographic, Der Spiegel in Germany. Again, this is very, very good in terms of knowing that the research you've done is actually getting out there and it is being communicated across the web beyond the university and the institution. We can also look at the demographics in altmetric.com. We can start to drill down and see the percentage of such as tweets and blogs and videos. Obviously, Twitter being the prominent form of communication for researchers on social on the social web. And we can see where the percentage of and that the number two in this particular article was 9% of all the tweets uh, came from Japan and 9% came from the US. So this has potential um, implications in terms of finding out where your research has been communicated, why perhaps this is happening in another country, is there some sort of a particular interest in the research you're doing in that country, and also is there potential for collaborations. So the Altmetric Score and Donut. 
So the more things that it's featured on, the more platforms, so, so policy documents, news, blogs, Twitter, etc., the more colours that will appear within the, um, so, uh, the, the altmetric donut. Each um, output has, each uh, 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 platform it's mentioned on has a different weighing. So Twitter, a tweet is worth one point, whereas something like a, a news coverage, I believe, is worth eight points. Uh, don't quote me on that, but there is different weighings for different kind of forms of coverage. And we can find out by comparing this research to similar research that's been carried out, that we can find out where it sits within the uh, within the kind of the um, the percentile it ranks number eight in in kind of uh, articles in nature communications it ranks number 40 97 94 sorry for articles of a similar age so we can get to see uh, where it kind of ranks with its peers publishers it can be useful uh, publishers can start to see where their research has been communicated um, Elsevier recently bought a news communication site to also monitor this so again, it gives us some additional data on where this research is kind of being shared. And for publishers, this becomes particularly useful. The downside is that publishers may start to make decisions, uh, and they've, they've always done this anyway on, on terms of picking hot topics, but they may still even strategize even more with regards to picking um, uh, things that are likely to get lots of social media coverage as opposed to those that don't, which is quite a sad kind of, uh, uh, kind of a bit of a concern but um, the, the sort of, um, in this day and age, metrics are, uh, are being used sometimes in ways that uh, perhaps we may not feel so, so happy about. Uh, funders also get to find out where their research has been communicated again. And, uh, and again, potentially the downside of this is that they may start to, start to choose where, uh, what research they want to fund based on uh, how it is communicated and how popular it is. And this is one of the detractions of such as altmetrics that people may see it as a communications um, competition that, 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 that the best research, the best communicators come out on top. And uh, unfortunately, that will be, you know, true to some extent. But um, I feel that the actual kind of the benefits of altmetrics, altmetrics and being able to kind of see and communicate our research and find out where it's gone outweigh these concerns. It's the sort of thing that we just cannot ignore anymore. Uh, we can find out whether... Uh, by drilling down into the data, we can see that this particular paper has got 15 readers on Mendeley. We can also see other data again by drilling down into it. Also for librarians of particular use, there is a free Altmetric Explorer account. So you can search for data on any article from any publisher, and then you can share it with researchers and admins. So again, it's some way to kind of perhaps prompt and promote and show them where their research has been communicated and uh, you know kind of show them that that it is or isn't being communicated at least this is data from the University of Sheffield we can see here the actual mentions in the last couple of years uh, from the University of Sheffield we've received just over 125,000 mentions of which 100,000 were Twitter but there was over 6,000 news mentions and also over 4,000 blog posts there was 500 policy documents that have uh, cited our research and even 105 Weibo mentions, so we know that uh, our research is being shared on, on Chinese social media platforms. Wikipedia just accounts for just under 3,000 of these uh, mentions, which will, will invariably be citations to our research in Wikipedia entries. And given the importance of Wikipedia and how high it ranks within uh, Google results, then that is a very good uh, indicator of our attention again and uh, our research. We can actually look by authors, so this is my altmetric data, which won't be huge, but I do have a little bit of altmetric data, which I can again drill into. It is mostly tweets, and we can see uh, which is the most popular of the few papers that I've written. I can also um, look at a real-time mention of, of coverage from Shah, so I can actually save in the top right-hand corner. I can save that workspace so I can get it that I can get regular updates on any new coverage for my department. And we can see that uh, the, this recording was done uh, on the 9th of May. We can see on the 7th of May that there was um, some tweets regarding research that we had recently published. Um, so that was the most recent kind of coverage. We can filter down into the data. We can decide whether we want to look at things that have been mentioned in the last few days. We can look in the last few months. 
We can decide whether we want to pick journals. We can look at specific identifiers. We can even look at a specific ORCID ID. And there are far more other ways that we can drill down into this data. So in terms of creating reports, we can save search filters. We can set up automated email alerts. We can export this data into Excel or reports on individual articles. We can even have an API output for those who uh, can, can do things with APIs. And we can also set up direct links into other systems. So altmetric data can appear within your university library catalog if you have the technology to do that. So we can see publications in there and we can see their altmetric data. So in terms of use for librarians, it can allow them to make more informed decisions over subscriptions. Uh, although we must be, we must avoid being populist and picking the most popular uh, publications. It doesn't always work that way. It can help point researchers to where their research is being shared or when it is being ignored. And it is an opportunity for all the online research conversations uh, to view the online research conversations from your own institution. And it's a bigger picture around open access and open and research data management. It is just part of something else that is happening in research right now that is opening up research and opening up the conversations around research. So for researchers, they can get a, a bookmarklet that they can put into their web browser, into, into Chrome and Firefox, and that will allow them to go to such as these sites, the BMJ, Nature, etc. Click the little bookmarklet and it will bring up the altmetric data so they can see that instantly. And here, quite interestingly, is that we can see this tweet by uh, Matt Shirley who said, Wiley's altmetric launch demonstrates the low impact of my Wiley article, at least I know. And that is indeed a very, very useful piece of information to get a very low impact, a very low altmetric score, you know, of zero. Perhaps shows that maybe you should communicate that research and perhaps there is an audience out there that would be interested in your research. Now, not all papers get cited depending on what uh, field of research you're in. It, it will vary. Uh, in medicine, you're more likely to be cited than if you're in uh, the humanities where journals matter less. But... Um, but um, it does actually give you some kind of indication. And if you've got an altmetric score of zero, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get citations. Um, you may get citations and, and no altmetric score, but at least knowing you've got a low score is something to build on. There are lots of other altmetric companies out there, and I will quickly cover some of these now. Um, in terms of just um, going back to altmetric.com, they make all their data auditable. They don't show things like Facebook likes. It is too kind of quick and simple. They will actually monitor things like Facebook shares. And they do have systems in place to try and flag up suspect activity. Um, and we have to be kind of honest and guarded towards the fact that um, some academics are not honest. They will plagiarize. They will self-cite. They will uh, chop up the same piece of research in several publications. They will submit someone else's research as their own. They will peer review their own research and pretend to be someone else. So altmetrics is just as susceptible. So they do have the systems to try and uh, prevent this. Impact Story, which was set up by Jason Priem and Heather Power in um, the US, um, is um, a similar tool to altmetric where they look at the, the various data. These, these platforms... Uh, are very much aligned to each other. They've got the very much the same agenda. They may they may be working in in different ways and some and looking at slightly different data, but they are all driven by the idea of scholarly communications and opening up of research. Uh, you can join Impact Story with Orchid. So if you haven't got an Orchid ID and you have some research outputs, then it is well wise well wise to have one. Orchid is an individual ID for researchers. Uh, so it allows you to tie all your outputs to this one ID. So if your name is Jane Smith or you happen to get married and change your name and you publish under a new name, you can then take all your research and put it under the umbrella of this one ORCID account. So you can sign up to Impact Story with ORCID. And this is what it looks like. You can see within here my publications. You can see the coverage it's each one I've got in terms of tweets, uh, if there's been any blog coverage. And you can see that I have these achievements, very much like scout badges, that I can show uh, my global research has been discussed in seven countries. Um, and it says that's high. Only 34% of researchers have their work as widely discussed. So again, you can look at yourself like for like. You can have a look at um, what is your biggest piece of research. And again, uh, it tells me that my reading level is easily stood at grade six and above based on its abstracts and titles. So again... Very, very good, very, very useful um, information 
kind of uh, help enhance your research and scholarly communications. So here we can see in terms of my achievements, there's lots of different achievements I can look at and we're looking at engagement. Uh, we can look at um, more than 5% of people who mention your research are in the global south. So that puts me in the top 39% of researchers for that particular thing. And that includes countries like Argentina. Um, someone with 3.9 thousand followers tweeted my research. So again, that gives me a little badge follower frenzy. Now, these may seem kind of fun and trivial, but they are to some extent very, very useful. They give us lots of insights we didn't get. And um, you may be interested in these insights. You may not be interested. They're there. It's whether you want to engage with them or not. And a tool like Impact Story gives you different insights from what Altmetric does. So it's well worth having a look at both platforms. Uh, interestingly, it will bring up things where I've tweeted myself. Uh, as I've tweeted my own paper, as you would do. So it will include things like this. So we have to kind of, uh, again, go back to this idea that they are not metrics, they're alternative indicators. We can't measure a piece of research based on its tweets. But what we can do is we can get some idea of where it's been communicated and by whom, perhaps what they've said about your research in some, in some kind of post-publication open peer review. So it gives us lots, again, lots of benefits. Figshare, Fig which has been around for quite a long time, started by uh, Mark Hannell, is a way again for people to share and archive. Less of an altmetric company, more of an open data, uh, an open research uh, archive, but it is it is very much aligned with the altmetric companies, and uh, it allows you to upload lots and lots of different types of data, um, data sets, things that we ignore, things that we don't give DOIs to, uh, things like posters, presentations. We can archive those within Figshare and some institutions sign up to, to an institutional account. We have one at the University of Sheffield as we do an altmetric account as well. Uh, you can see here from the Figshare features uh, from a private uh, perspective that uh, with a free account you can get 20 gigabytes of private space and you can upload any file format. It gives you a DOI for your work um, if it hasn't got a DOI. And this is including things like negative and null results. Uh, just to get extra citations and attention for your work. And there is uh, a desktop, desktop uploader tool which allows you to kind of uh, drag and drop your files into the Figshare uh, 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 platform. And you can upload files up to five gigabytes. So it's very useful, not, not for all researchers who will have bigger file sets than 20 gigabytes, but you can pay for more space. And if you have an institutional uh, account, again, you can get more space. But there is a lot of potential with this tool. Kudos is a tool, again, which is about helping you to get found and communicate and share your research, get it read, get it cited. And again, it's another one to go and have a look at. It's been around for a few years, been around for a couple of years, and it is a way of aiding you in terms of scholarly communication. Mendeley, uh, which has been around for nearly a decade, we've been around since about 2008, does have its own altmetric uh, aspect. And one that is particularly useful um, is uh, which is also covered on altmetric.com is it, you can show how many readers have saved a copy of your paper and again research has shown that uh, saving uh, your research into a uh, such as a, a, a tool like site you like or Mendeley does mean there is possibly more uh, inclination for that uh, paper to be cited so it is a, a kind of a precursor to to citations in the same way that making your research open and open access is more likely to get excited sharing your research on twitter uh, and as long as it's open again uh, means there's more likely to get attention and then potentially citations <laughs> then there's plum analytics which again uses uh, modern metrics to try and help people um, kind of answer the questions and tell the stories around their research so it's another one for you to go and have a look at i know i focus more on altmetric and impact story but the, 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 all these platforms do, do variations of different things, so it's worth having a look at Plum Analytics. What Plum does is it looks at things like usage, clicks, downloads, views, library holdings, video plays. It captures things like bookmarks. It looks at blog post mentions, Wikipedia links, similar to altmetric.com. It looks at social media, plus ones, likes, shares, and tweets. And then it looks at the, the traditional citations. So again, uh, a variety of different attentions. Snowball Metrics, another one to look at. I don't know a great deal about Snowball Metrics, but I've been aware about it for um, a year or two. 
There is a Snowball Metrics recipe book uh, on their website at the moment. It is a 2014 recipe book, so I don't know if that will be updated at any time soon. And there's also a fact sheet, so it's perhaps worth downloading the fact sheet and having a look at those metrics. So ways to keep update. Uh, there's the Impact Story newsletter, there, which is online. The Altmetric blog, the Plum, An Plum Analytics blog. Also, the LSC Impact of Social Sciences blog, which talks a lot about Altmetrics. I've discussed it on there and written blog posts. And also, if you're using Twitter, you can follow the Altmetrics hashtag uh, on there. So, this is the book which I've written. I say there are, I believe, if I recall, 12 chapters, uh, which take us from the point of social media to how we got to where we were uh, and Altmetrics. And uh, it's part practitioner's book, part theoretical part to try and help you engage with uh, altmetrics and try and get research to engage and understand them and also to get them to use these new technologies in a way which is hopefully not too disruptive uh, any kind of new technology can have a disruption uh, element to it but the whole point here is to try and bring these in in a natural fluid way that can help enhance research and help research outputs and help researchers just kind of understand where the research is, research is going or certainly research departments directors of research etc so thank you for listening there's my contact details feel free to contact me if you wish and the slides number 7 to 28 were kindly shared by uh, Natalia from um, altmetric.com and also Cat Chime so um, I thought it was just as well to use their slides and uh, I, I cleared it with them so it's all perfectly safe uh, it made sense to use theirs soon as I was focusing on that platform more than any other so thanks a lot for listening goodbye